and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to give you a look inside uh, this book that we use uh, to teach art here in the Lake House Homeschool. This is the How to Teach Art to Children book um, by Evan Moore and I just picked my uh, copy up from bookdepository.com. I like to order from there simply because they have free delivery worldwide. So I love um, getting my books from there. Um, so I will pop a link down below um, for you to have a look. Now I really love this resource because it makes teaching art super easy and super simple. They use um, uh, art supplies and things that you probably already have in your home. They have detailed instructions and the lessons are very easy and very short. Probably only takes us about 20 minutes um, to do an art lesson. So super simple and super easy. We also do um, artist study here in the Lake House Homeschool as well. And I have filmed a video on um, how I teach artist studies. And so I'll throw a card at the top for you um, so that you can go and have a look at that video also. So we do study um, various artists throughout the year and then um, we use this um, book as well. Now, I don't use this book um, every term. Uh, so far, we just used it for term two um, this year. Um, and then we're gonna take a break in term three and then we'll use it again um, in term four. And so um, it's quite a long book. So I won't get through this whole book in a year. It'll probably take us several years to work our way um, through this book. So let's have a look inside. Okay, so here's a look at the materials list. Um, these are the things that you will need to complete um, the activities in the book. And as I said, again, super simple uh, materials and you probably already have most of these in your collection. So it just goes through a different um, variety of papers that you will need. The craft supplies are things like straws, uh, pipe cleaners, um, pop sticks, string, material scraps, the tools that you uh, would need, scissors, glue, staplers, tape, hole punch, and uh, different paints, watercolors, um, sponges, um, trays for mixing new colors. Again, these are all things um, that I already have at home. I don't think I'll need to go hunting for any of these materials. So super easy to find materials. And here is um, the things that they go through in this book. So they go through line, shape, color, value, texture, form, and space. Okay, and so the uh, area of line is in then broken up into um, different activities. So, so far um, in term two, we've just worked our way through all of the line um, activities. And then I said, uh, again, I said, we'll take a break and pick it up again in term four. So let's have a closer look at some of the activities in the book. Okay. So what it does, it has a brief description um, of line. It has the materials um, that you're gonna use, and then it has the step-by-step -step instructions. Now, some activities then have um, a sheet that you may need, not all of them. Um, the book is not perforated, so you can't um, take that out. Um, what you can do if you have a printer and scanner is just scan the page um, and print it out. Um, very easy to do. Um, for this particular activity, we just got a blank piece of paper and broke it up into three sections ourselves. I didn't actually print it out. Um, but there are some other activities in the book that we will need to scan um, and print out. Uh, here's uh, some examples of activities that don't require um, a sheet. Um, to print out. Um, so let's just take a closer look um, at this activity here. This is um, line designs. Children plan a design to reinforce their understanding of diagonal, vertical and horizontal lines. And then it goes through the materials that you need. So it has um, white paper, 
assorted colored construction paper cut into strips and it gives you some ideas of what size to use, uh, felt tip pens, glue, scissors. And then here are the step-by-step -step instructions. It says give children the paper, supplies and pens, have them use a black pen to divide their white paper into three areas. They may divide the paper into squares, overlapping shapes or equal parts. Then have the children glue cut paper lines to each area. The lines may be thick, thin, solid or broken. One um, area should contain diagonal lines, one should contain vertical lines and one should contain horizontal lines. Children may want to draw lines with a felt tip pen to enrich their designs. And then here is the examples um, that they have shown. So here is the piece of paper broken up into the three section strips of paper. And then this is their finished product here. So easy. I love it. It's a grab and go book. I can simply uh, grab this um, off of my trolley, look uh, quickly, look at the materials I need, gather those. As I said, they're e super simple materials, so I already have them. Um, easy step-by-step -step instructions and then a visual to show us what they are actually talking about. So easy. And then these lessons would probably only take about 20 minutes to complete. And I use this resource uh, with my, my pre-primary kiddo does it. He's five, um, then my grade two daughter, and then all the way up to William, who's in um, grade six. So he's 12. So they can all do it together. So easy. So let me give you a quick flip through of this book. <laughs> So here's an example of an activity um, where I will actually scan this and print one copy out uh, for each of my children to create a color wheel. Um, and again, just so easy. They give you uh, what it is actually going to look like in the end. It has your materials um, and then has your step in step, uh, step by step instructions, which are really easy to follow. So they have a section on uh, learning about value and I had never really heard of that concept before. So let me just show you um, if maybe you haven't heard of it either. So it says here, learning about value, um, it says any hue or color on the color wheel may have an infinite number or, of values or tones. When colors are used at full value, they appear strong and bright. When colors are mixed with white paint or water, they appear as muted and lighter tones. And so it's going through basically um, shades um, and so we've got looking at black and white in between grays all around uh, colors have many values light and dark mixing colors with white shading shapes and an activity called two butterflies um, and so that's what they're talking about um, when they are talking about value so this looks like a great activity, mixing colors with white. Again, it came, comes with um, a sheet uh, that you can scan um, and print off. Um, and let's just have a quick look at this activity. Uh, mixing colors with white. Colors mixed with white are called tints. This project encourages children to create tints of, um, of the color wheel. The materials that you need um, are paints, and it lists off the colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and white. You need paint brushes, plates um, or foam trays, access to a sink or washing station, paper towels and the worksheet. And then the step-by-step -step instructions are here and there's also um, a visual as well for you to have a look at. 
Number one, give children the paints, paintbrushes and trays. Number two, have children put a small puddle of red paint on the tray, then have them paint the circle marked red on page 73, which is here. Number three, next, have children add one drop of white paint to the red puddle, um, puddle on the tray and mix it and tell the children to now use that new colour to paint the first circle in the add one drop of white column. Guide children to continue following the directions at the top of each column to mix the colours and paint circles. Remind children to rinse the paintbrush before beginning a new row of colours. So here you're starting with red, here is one drop of white, this is two drops of white and then this is three drops of white. And then it just goes down um, through the colours. Um, so you will be ending up with a sheet like this. So cool um, and so easy to do. Okay, this is part um, two of the book um, and it has its own um, contents page here. So if you would like to pause the video so that you can have a closer look um, at that contents page. But it is now um, starting to look at different artists. This is so cool. Um, so it's looking, we've got Vincent van Gogh, we've got the ancient Egyptians, we've got Henry Matisse, Leonardo da Vinci, um, it goes on and on and on, Chinese bookmakers, um, we have still life, self-portraits, rock art, mosaics, bark painting, pop art, um, sculptures, a whole lot in this section. It looks amazing. So let me give you a closer look um, at part two. These activities are starting to get a little more complicated now. Um, and so, but the activities look amazing, but it is at the end of the book. So you've had, you know, quite a long time um, to work through art um, before you get to um, this section. Um, I'm really interested in this. I might actually do this this term because we're actually looking at Leonardo um, da Vinci. So I might uh, do this activity anyway. You don't have to do them in order. Uh, through the book. You can do whatever you like with the book. I am working through the book um, in order um, with obviously some exceptions, but you make curriculum work for you. You um, do with it what you like. This is cool, looking at Chinese bookmakers and actually making an accordion book. Okay, so there you have it. There is a closer look inside how to teach art to children. We are absolutely loving this book here in the Lake House um, Homeschool and I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching my video today and I will see you next time. Bye.